I just realized I forgot to talk about the actual taper. <laughs> the whole the whole reason for this video. Jeez. Happy Easter. It is Easter Sunday. Just got back from uh, hanging out with some family at my aunt's house. It's about 7 p.m., 45 degrees, so it's pretty brisk. Probably gonna wear gloves. But we have 10 easy miles to run today. Very easy miles. Now, after we get done with those 10 miles, we'll talk about what I'm doing this last week of the taper to ensure that I'm gonna do well at this marathon and everything's gonna to go to plan. We are exactly one week out from the marathon. It's next Sunday, so 10 easy miles, and I'll see you after the run. Easiest 10 miles I've ever ran. By far, ever. I felt so good during that run, and it's definitely because this past week I haven't been running 50 to 60 miles for the entire week. So, details of the run are 10.10 miles in a total time of 1 hour, 25 minutes and 33 seconds, average pace of 8, 28 minutes per mile, average cadence of exactly 180 steps per minute, and an average heart rate of 153 beats per minute. Exactly what we want to see. Now, as I was doing that run, I was thinking about what my racing strategy is going to be. Now, before the run, as I was fueling up and stuff, I looked at the final race instructions. And there's going to be goo at the race. So that's part of the plan is to not have to buy any goos and not carry any with me. Uh, I have to look at the race plan again, and we'll talk about that um, in the next video when I talk about the race and everything. Uh, but what the plan is to just go buy whatever they're having on course, which is goo. They're going to have two flavors, triberry and vanilla bean, which are both okay, I guess. Uh, I'll switch between the two. And I'm not really sure, haven't come up with an idea yet on how, or a solution yet, on how I'm going to carry G1M Sport. I think I'm going to start with one bottle fully stocked with two scoops and bottles full with, uh, with fluid. And then I might try to somehow carry a container or a bag or something with a funnel or something that'll fit inside my little tiny water bottle to be able to restock on the G1M Sport throughout the race. That's the only thing I'm worried about. Based on this run, I'm ready. My legs are feeling fresher. The only thing other than I'm worried about is my left foot is starting to hurt or has been hurting on the, on the outside of the foot. So I want to be careful there and make sure that uh, I'm not dealing with like a stress fracture or anything. Because um, I've had that happen before in my first marathon. I got to like mile 25 and the third metatarsal, right in the middle, snapped. And it was because of a stress fracture that had just built up because I was running too much on my tiptoes instead of on my midfoot. So I don't want that to happen again because last time I was out from running for about eight weeks in a boot. And then after that, it took me another like six or so weeks to get back to some sort of training. So a total of like 12 to 14 weeks, I'd be out. So uh, the other thing I was thinking about is what's my next race? I haven't completely chosen it yet, but we'll save that. We'll save that. I'll see you tomorrow morning. So I figured out the solution to my problem of how I'm gonna carry my nutrition. I was talking to my dad while he was home on break and I remembered that BPN has sample packs. So let's jump into the computer and I'll show you what we're doing here. 
So we made it to the site here, and if we go into uh, the search bar here, just type in uh, samples, and then you come to supplement samples, and go down, we found G1M Sport right here. We added four of them because I'm gonna use three in the race, and I might just carry one with me before the race. Um, you know, it's always good to be prepared, so I got four. So hopefully those should be here by the end of the week, and we'll have everything we need for the race. Um, I have probably like six servings of the, uh, the electrolytes left, so I'm gonna try to be very, very uh, conscious and, uh, what's the word, uh, uh, frugal with my use of those. Um, I'm gonna try to hit the sauna like two or three times this week, so I'm gonna need it for that. But I wanna make sure I have like three or four servings at least for the day of the marathon, so I can do one or two before, some during the race, and then some after to replenish electrolytes because it's supposed to be hot that day. I just checked the weather and it's forecasting for 82 degrees, so around the time of the race it's going to be about 60 degrees when it starts and it's going to jump up to about 70 to 72 degrees by the end of the race so there's going to be a lot of sweating happening and even though it's northeast ohio i think that we can determine what or predict what the weather's going to be like if it's anything like it was last year it's going to be hot so i am just trying to make sure as much as I can to be prepared and to have enough electrolytes so that when I get to mile 20 to 22, 23, I'm not cramping up and that last 5k or so I can really just charge and push and try to try to blast through my goal. This little concoction right here is what I like to call a cheeseburger in disguise. So it contains about six to eight ounces of ground beef, whatever I had left over. Um, then it also has rice for the carbs. There's a lot of rice, probably three servings of rice. Then we have some cheese, some mustard, ketchup, and mayonnaise. And then the secret ingredient here that makes it taste like a burger is pickles. I love pickles. I remember when I'd be a kid and we'd go to McDonald's and get double cheeseburgers. My brother and I would always ask for extra pickles because they're so good. So let's uh, have a taste test here. Make sure to get a little bit of everything. Mmm. Tasty. Very, very satisfying. So I've officially stayed at the same weight basically for this entire prep, the last I want to say 10 or so weeks. Um, the goal really wasn't to cut any weight. The goal was to just get faster at the weight that I'm at and not really do any body recomposition, build any muscle or anything. Um, yeah, just stay the same weight that I was and just get faster, get better at running. Now I know running long distance can affect your metabolism in a negative way. So I've definitely been trying to uh, lift three times a week, get in a good two upper body sessions and one solid lower body session. Not enough or not too much to really tax my muscles that much, but enough to tax my muscles enough to be efficient and effective. So I've seen a few people do this. On the inside of my pair of shoes, I'm going to be running for the marathon. I'm going to write the time, or a little bit of the time, 
that I'm going to finish the race in. It's going to be in writing, so I have to do it. So, we are going to write on the sole here, nice little three We'll put two colons there and three twenty something. That's right. My goal is to run a three twenty something, a sub three thirty, which is not a PR by about ten minutes. But if I get down into the 320s, that means that I am well capable of qualifying for the Boston Marathon or running a sub three hour marathon in the next year. So, three hours and 20 something minutes. I got the question from one of the subscribers uh, about what shoes I'm wearing. And I've never actually talked about this on the channel, I don't think. And my plan was to make a video about this at some point. So the shoes that I'm wearing are called the Newton, come on camera, focus there, the Newton Fate. And this is the sixth version. I've worn the first, second, fifth, and sixth versions. And since about the middle of October, I've been wearing this pair. Um, it's estimated that these pairs of shoes have around six to 800 miles in them. There's people that have clocked about a thousand miles in them, which is absolutely crazy when, it, when you come, when you talk about, when it comes to talking about running shoes. But that's probably the reason why they're so expensive is that they hold up. I am perfectly okay with paying $140, $150 for a pair of shoes that I'm going to be able to get, be able to buy, and have for six months to a year, and not have to worry about buying new shoes again for an extended period of time. These have lasted me through two marathon preps, and the second one being like four to 500 miles. Um, so yeah, I, I, I love these shoes. Yeah, these are getting to the end of their life, but they still have, I mean, with the tread on them, they still have, I'd say, at least 300 miles on them. So I'm going to wear them out. I actually had to uh, replace the one shoestrings that I put into them. I put these shoestrings in, which were from the first version of the Kismet, which is uh, another brand, another type of the shoe, and I'll get into this in, in another video, like I said, but uh, those have been through four pairs of shoes, and finally, uh, I had to replace them with a pair of laces from my dad's, one pair of Newtons that were black, and I might replace them before the marathon to, to match, but um, the shoelace finally gave up after four pairs, uh, so that's a testament to the shoes and the laces that they use, and just the overall build quality of these shoes, that's why I like them. I'm going to put the uh, time on this one here too, and looks like my light just uh, died there, but I'm going to put the time on the inside of this one too, and we're going to head to the gym for our last pump session before the race. So I'll see you at the gym. I thought you might like to see my little bounce card that I made, which is actually part of the sign that I got from the marathon that they forgot to pick up. So that was my little little bounce card that helped me get a little bit more light on the side of my face here because the window's right there and the chair's bl Okay, I'll see you at the gym. So we're uh, getting a bike warm up, just a little light ride to get the legs moving just so that we're not stagnant. Got about two minutes left and then we'll jump into the workout. The first part of the workout it's gonna be core as always. And then we're gonna jump into the upper body portion of the workout, which is the rest of the workout. And the goal for that workout is, again, just to get blood into the muscles, to get the body moving, and just not to be stagnant three days out from the marathon. So, 
Warm up is almost complete. We'll see you when we jump into the workout. So we're doing our core circuit. And we're starting off with hanging leg raises. And one thing you want to try and do is curl your butt under. Squeeze your core. Now this is number three. So, getting pretty tired here. It's like nine or ten, so now we're gonna go into uh, cable crunches. Same thing, you don't wanna like go down straight or stick your butt out. You just wanna try and curl your upper to your lower. I don't know what the scientific terms are, but whatever. I try to keep my arms close to my head just to get that factor out of there. A little wuss. Gotta take it down a little bit. How many reps you about to do? Try to do like 15 ish. Yeah, I feel a little better. Squeeze more control. I'm going until I can anymore. It's probably like 2025. Not the year 2025, but like 20 to 25 reps. And I'm not trying to swing. I'm really trying to get the contraction. All right. Reps. I don't. I didn't count. <laughs> Usually it's like 20 to 25. Just go until it hurts. Just go until it hurts. That's all that Tomorrow, matters. I guess. So now we're moving on to a superset of pull-ups and uh, dumbbell bench press. We're gonna keep it light on the dumbbells. Uh, just get a nice pump. We're gonna do like 10 to 12 reps for the press and like six to eight reps on the pull-ups. And one thing I do with pull-ups is I try to think about get grabbing the bar and then twisting around so that I engage my, uh, my scapula first. The first movement I like to do is squeeze my butt cheeks and then pull up and then pull up. Rocking 55s. 55s. I'm gonna do like 10, okay. 12 reps. Just get a really good pump. And when I go up to the top, I'm gonna kind of curl them in to get to feel a better contraction. That's how I feel it best. So here we go. Like I said, I don't want to push it too much because we're Saturday. There's like three and a half days out from the marathon. So next workout, next exercise. That's not. Nope. I got it. <laughs> next superset is seated. Well, this be this wouldn't be Arnold press, would it? Just seated uh, overhead seated dumbbell press. Seated overhead dumbbell press. And we're gonna go from there into dumbbell lateral raises. I usually like doing them with a cable, but I just wanna do them both at the same time this time. So here we go, I'm trying to keep the core nice and tight and keep the, keep the dumbbells kind of more in front of you. Go for 10 or so reps. Like I said last time, you're gonna try to leave with your elbow, point your pinkies to the sky. You can also bend over a little bit too. 
Here, I'll do it again. Try not to. <laughs> like a loser. Great keep, form, man. Keep control with it. Really? Try to activate them. Try and do like 15. I don't know how many I've done. That's good enough. Yeah. I am strong. Very strong. So we're finishing off. I guess this is the next to last superset we're doing. We're doing tricep extensions followed by bicep curls, both on the cable machine. Just to get the same resistance the entire time. And we're just gonna go like 20 rips or until burn out. Rest for like two minutes, do it again. Actually doing this one backward because last set I forgot to do the bicep curls. And I'm using two ropes here to make sure I get a better contraction past my hips here. Get a close up, sit close up of my muscle, bro. From the other side, bro. Ride the rising stack here. I feel like I'm not getting a full contraction though. My left side is weird. We're gonna end this workout like every upper body workout should be ended with three sets of push ups until failure. So here we go. <clears throat> Hat backward for extra power. The last one's gonna be a grinder. That's it. All right, post-workout physique update. Four days out from marathon number two of the year. Lost a little bit of muscle over the past couple months, a little bit of strength, but here's where we're sitting, feeling pretty pumped up. As always, my chest is small, but... Last Thursday, I had this immense craving on a run for strawberries, pineapples, and I've had a craving for oranges for like the past month. So last Thursday, I went to Aldi and got a pineapple, a bag of oranges, a bag of apples, uh, and then some strawberries, blackberries, and blueberries. So I have some of those in this bowl. I'm going to chow down on that finish up this orange and go to sleep. I just realized I forgot to talk about the actual taper. <laughs> the whole the whole reason for this video, geez. Um, so this week uh, on Tuesday, I was supposed to run five miles easy, which I did, that was yesterday. And then tomorrow, which is Thursday, four miles easy. Friday, three miles easy. And then uh, Saturday, two miles, like a run, walk, kind of really easy thing with some sprints, like five or six all out sprints for just maybe five, 10 seconds to get the legs turning over. So if you got any sort of value from this video, whether it was informational or tips on running or lifting, fitness, nutrition, or if it just brought joy to your day and gave you a laugh, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button if you wanna see more of my fitness and business and life journey. And with that, I'll see you in the next video where I will run a sub 330 marathon at the 2022 Hall of Fame Marathon. See you in the next video.